breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. We're all set to begin, so let's dive right in to Bikers, Dice, and Bars. Talking bicycles and motorbikes, gamer things and all the like. You can listen to it in your cars, but mostly it's about... Hey, Jacob, what are you drinking over there? Beer of our people, old German. Ooh, once again, <laughs> bringing it back to the old what school. Is OG. this OG <laughs> premium lager? Have we, we had this before? Yeah, no, I think we've had it at least two or three times. It might have even been the first thing. It was. If not oh. the it second was. or third, yeah. but it was, it's up oh, there. Oh, that's why this yeah. taste is familiar. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the official beer of Bikers, Dice, and Bars at this point. Old Hopefully, German. Old German, if you're looking to sponsor a podcast, please let us know. We'd love to have you. Bring one of your representatives on the show and tell all of our uh, two listeners about uh, all of the great things that your beer company does. You know what, NPC? This beer is definitely not the worst. <laughs> this is this is this beer is not the worst. And speaking of other things that are not the worst, uh, you're listening to Bikers, Dice, and Bars, recorded here in Portland, Oregon. As usual, I'm NPC. I'm just Jacob, the Doctor Xander, Jerry Mander. Poppy Beaujolais. And today, Xander gave us a little bit of a hint here. We're going to be talking about uh, the broad scope topic of the worsts, as in the worst rides, the worst games, the worst drinks or drinking experiences. Oh, dear. The worst things that we have experienced in our hobbies. But we're going to try and do it in a jovial manner. <laughs> not, not, not the total antithesis of nerdy nice. Yeah. But in a, a fun loving kind of <laughs> we've had these experiences kind of way. Yeah, this is shitty seventh and we're doing <laughs> the worst. <laughs> no, but we're also trying a slightly new format alternative this time. We're gonna experiment with this and see if it works the way we want to. But the theory is we wanna have a little bit more time talking about the things that we love instead of kind of cramming them into some segments here. So we're really just going to go to town on this a little bit more free form than we do. I and hope you enjoy. And let us know what y'all think. Hopefully this episode is not the worst. <laughs> Speaking of worsts, oh my God, yeah, we're rolling into fall, winter in the Pacific Northwest. And the weather last couple mornings has reminded me of my worst motorcycle ride ever. Ooh, tell me. Wait, on a beautiful fall day? I am confused. Continue. Well, it's because out in my neck of the woods, oh. in the hinterlands of unincorporated Washington County. <clears throat> oh. Washington County, not state. Washington because County. There's different things state. around here. <laughs> it confused me when I moved to this town. We've had temperatures... As low as 21, 22 in the morning. I hate it. Recently? As Recently? in the last yeah. few days? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So many years ago, when I was in Portland, I was working at a job where I worked in East County. For those of you not from the Portland area, that's basically the east side of Portland. The place I worked for had their main office on the far, far, far west side of town. In Hillsboro, for those of you who are local, it was a day where it was a mandatory meeting. Just Jacob, only rides. It was 18 degrees. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Continue. So from through morning traffic at 18 degrees, I rode from my work site all the way to the main office for the mandatory meeting. When I got there, I slid my hands off my handlebars and they were like permanently locked because of arthritis <laughs> due to cold in the circle grips or from around the ha ha handlebars. So your hands look like a Lego guy. Yes. Yes. I looked like a Lego guy. Okay. Oh. Now I have ridden in rain. I have ridden in sleet. I have ridden in hail. One of my bicycle rides involved hail the size of marbles. Uh, it, I've sucked, but nothing sucked that bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
it took me over an hour and a half to warm back up because I was traveling at highway speed most of that time at 18 degrees. Drivers going by me were like, you're out of your goddamn mind. And mm-hmm. Yes, I was. but <laughs> Yeah. And I don't ride with heated gear, but oh, let me tell you, I started reconsidering that that day. <laughs> I've I've been thinking about the same thing as well. Like I I don't really like riding in the winter because I don't like cold hands and I don't like cold thighs and those they just freeze up. And I've been really considering getting like some USB pluggable kind of something to just run in under your jacket and plug into your engine. That'd be rad. Just Jacob's ride reminds me of my worst ride. A number of years ago, back when I had my very first scooter, a lovely little buddy fifty. But I think I got bored out to be a buddy 70 illegal. Anyways, not, <laughs> not the point. Uh, not the point. Y'all remember that massive snowstorm 2008 into 2009 that winter? Oh, yep. Snowmageddon. That, like, yeah. like the actual Snowmageddon. That was when, actual I remember storm. that because Obama got elected during that, <laughs> during that snowstorm. And a bunch of us were watching the elections at our house in the snowstorm. And then we were trapped there for days. <laughs> well, this one was, uh, this was in December, but... Yeah, that was my first winter in Portland. I remember it very, <laughs> very well. I got stuck in my driveway for a few days. I got stuck in my house for a few days because I couldn't get out of my driveway. Welcome to town, kid. Yeah. Anyways, when that snowstorm rolled into this city, I was working for TSA at the time. You were the man. I was the man. And I had rolled into work on my Buddy 50 at 5 a.m., the snow started to come down around 8 a.m. in those little tiny ass flakes to let you know this storm means business. <laughs> and I'm, this was back when the security terminals were still above ground next to the counter check in for the, for, for the airlines. And so I had a giant plate glass view of what I had to go back through a few hours from then. And I remember strapping up in my scooter and I remember the winds coming in at like 30, 40 miles an hour, and I just decided I'm just going to go back to my girlfriend's house because it's way closer than the West Hills. And being almost blown off the road, going like 15 miles an hour back to where she lived and actually not that far from here. And then getting to work the next, or trying to go to work the next day in which I had to start pouring hot water over my scooter to even get the electric kickstart, or the the, the actual kickstart to work because the electric wouldn't fire. (laughs) And I was like, I, I'm going to go to work. And then after that second day, because I worked for the federal government, Governor Ted Kolingowski, our governor at the time, declared a state of emergency. <laughs> That's right. Which <laughs> mandated that I was required by law to show up to work. Oh, wow. For two weeks. And every day I would show up to work on my little, little buddy 50. Wow. And I would show up to the airport. For like six or seven days in a row, I did this. And my shift was normally a five-hour shift. It was a part-time job. I was mandated to stay like 12 or 14 hours because, again, they could hold you there as long as they wanted to. On one of the last days, I go and I do the hot water thing on my scooter. And I kick her, rev her up, and I get her going. And I'm just like, all right, here we go, here we go. And I start going. And at this point, it, the snow's mostly gone. But because it's 4.30 in the morning... I don't see the black ice until a little bit later. Oh, and I come no. coming to a four-way stop, and I'm like, all right, just got to pump my brakes. It's not going to be a problem. Unless your handle brakes are frozen. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so I start trying to pump the brakes, and it's like nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And finally, I crack the ice, and because of that, I hit way too hard on the brakes, and I slide into the intersection, just... And... <laughs> And dear listener, if you are not familiar with the Pacific Northwest <laughs> black ice, it's the fucking worst. Because we hit that that spot where we just basically stay at a permafreeze during those times. And even if the road gets cleared out by plows or whatever, that we have that freezing rain that mm-hmm. comes in, freezes overnight, maybe melts a little bit during the day, and then refreezes at night. And essentially that means we have a basically two months of black ice. It sucks. It's, it's, it was about a quarter to a half inch of pure clean ice and so all you see is wow. asphalt until it's too late mm-hmm. and so i slid out into the middle of the intersection some guy tried to help me get back up and i was like hey thanks man i think i'm okay put my shit back together 
and I get back on. As I start riding back towards work, I realize I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> oh. And so I roll in late and I get the whole boss looking at the watch, tapping it thing as I stroll in. And then he sees that I'm physically limping as I have torn through my uniform pants. That I didn't oh. realize at the time uh, my leg is actually pretty messed up. And keep in mind, I work with a bunch of, you know, kind of machismo guys who always brag about their four by four. I got vroom, vroom. I got this big car and truck that does whatever this big Jeep. And they all stayed at home uh, during this time period. And I was used to chastise them as I got a guy who comes to work every fucking day on a goddamn scooter. What's your excuse? <laughs> uh, until this happened to me. But so then I, they, my supervisor saw me like the, the suits don't come down for nothing. Mm hmm. But the, the, this, one of the suits came down and drove me to a hospital down in Sunnyside. Oh, Sunny. wow. Dang. I was bleeding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, was not great. Uh, but, you know, I got paid for. I worked for the government. I don't know. But, yeah, that was that black ice just slide through was one Yikes. of the fucking worst. Yikes. Yeah. I think my worst. See, OK, I was about <laughs> to relate to the black ice thing and I can relate to it. But I would I've experienced black ice twice on a motorcycle. And as much as it sucked. I cannot relate those to being my worst rides because both times it didn't damage my bike at all. I got right up, kept driving, and nothing else like remotely weird happened. It was a learning experience for me, I, but it also taught me not to ride during certain seasons. <laughs> uh, but the worst Fair. ride was actually during the summer, and this was a couple years back. I took a solo motorcycle trip down to Waldport. To uh, go to this cabin that was like right on the beach and get some writing done. And it was amazing. Some writing and some writing. The ride down there sucked because it was uh, at one point I'm going down a back road, 18 or something. No, no, I don't remember what highway, what highway it was. I was heading out of Corvallis down to the coast and someone throws a milkshake at me. And it hits what it yeah someone coming the other way threw a milkshake at me and it hit my windshield splattered all across it so I had to pull over and clean it off. Thankfully, I had a squeegee in my saddlebag. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Okay, that's, that's <laughs> fucked up, man. It's fucked up. What the fuck yeah. is wrong with people? Like that, that you is don't potentially. Even, you, he doesn't even look like Andy. No. <laughs> 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 NGO for our listeners who don't know who that is, look it up. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, oh, my, funny my friend doesn't know what that is, so they should look it up. <laughs> yeah, there will be a link. I, I I am ashamed to be linking to him in our notes, but I'm gonna just do the milkshake <laughs> gift. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And the the I got down there. Finally, everything was fine. I'm I'm at the I'm in Waldport. I have a fantastic experience in this tiny ass town that was like the perfect town for me to get away to and have a solo writing experience. On the way back home, the state's on fire. Oh, and oh I'm no. riding a back highway, and it's just heavy smoke lingering everywhere. Oh I, and I was just <laughs> <laughs> in my I motorcycle, that. and I had to like pull off every 15 or 20 minutes and hit my inhaler. And it was just a grueling, awful experience. It was all you could think was. God, I miss those fucking milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I need some strawberry goodness right now. You know what would be really refreshing? <laughs> right. Well, my An worst... old German premium lager. Uh, yeah. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, well, I've not been riding consistently for, for very long here, only a couple of weeks. I mean, I could talk about, you know, my first experience taking the Team Oregon class where I quit, but eh, I could talk about the first time I took you know, Joan, my Honda Rebel out and I just fell. But really, my worst actual ride happened just a couple of weeks ago. I was going to the DMV at early in the morning to I'm get, so sorry. get the how you right to get the the title transferred over and get all my ducks in a row for for the new Scooty. And I decided to go before work, as you have to do when you work a nine to five thirty kind of kind of gig. And I decided in all my infinite wisdom for various and sundry reasons, decided to go to the DMV in North Portland. Oh, rookie mistake. Because you hate yourself? Because <laughs> I hate myself? Because Gresham yeah. was too far away? Uh, so I am, it's my first early morning ride. Normally I don't have to be to work until 
9 a.m. I don't live that far from the day job. I can I can leave around 8 30, 8 45 and be fine. So I'm leaving at, you know, 7 15 in the morning. Forgot about the whole morning fog thing <laughs> that we get here in in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, especially in early fall. And I'm I'm going to an area of town I don't know very well. I've got my, you know, Google Maps on my phone and I've got my little headphones plugged in under my helmet. I had it all figured out. And I was trying to take the route that I don't really like going over about 35 miles an hour right now just because I'm a new writer. Smart, smart. And yeah, which is pretty smart. And there was getting to that DMV, there was this there's this portion of road where you had to go on this particular road that was 45 miles an hour. So it's morning rush hour traffic. It's foggy. Uh, the, I have to go over a couple overpasses, which, of course, are probably going to be a little bit icy because it's an overpass in the morning dew and all that kind of garbage, even though it's in the that 40s. Will happen. Even though it's in the 40s, you know, and my helmet is fogging up. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I'm going. I am terrified. I hadn't taken my Adderall yet. <laughs> uh, it's just... Uh, it's just a mess. And these poor people behind me, and I'm just like, I'm trying, I'm going like 30 in a 45 in morning traffic. And these poor people behind me are just pissed. And I only have to go on this road for like a hot minute before I turn off. And then I'm on kind of more back roads where it's like 20 or 30 miles an hour or whatever. And at some point, I turned off onto one of these other roads. I'm just about to the DMV. And this, this fucking minivan just decides they're going to pass me. Like I am clearly struggling, you know, and whatever. And they just decide they're just going to they're just going to pass me. And it was it was terrifying. (laughs) I think that the worst the worst part was I I, I didn't know where I was going and my helmet was fogging up. So I basically had to ride with my visor open. So the morning (laughs) air going into my eyeballs and I wear contact lenses. So that's fun. And basically writing illegally because I don't have any eye protection and just <laughs> it was terrifying. I, I don't want to drift too far into uh, protect, uh, 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 accessory advice discussion here. But uh, be- because of that exact reason, I have clear sunglasses that I wear in yeah. the mornings or at night when it gets too dark. I need I need yeah. to get me some. I need to get me some. They are lifesavers, especially then- specifically. For the wind breeze. Yeah. Also, pin lock visors are your friend. Yep. I had, I mean, I double checked all my, all my, my little vents were open and it was just really, I mean, I was, I was also terrified. So I was probably breathing really heavily, you know? <laughs> I think it was only like your seventh or eighth ride. On yeah. That it was my, yeah. and it was my first like early morning ride ever. And I was, I was, it was sort of my test for myself. And also I didn't know if they had to do a VIN check on the scooter or not. So I just took it there with me. Another thing I found that's helpful in those kinds of conditions too is just going and like clipping your visor up, just like uh, like the the, yeah. the one scotch because that airflow will go yeah, and nice. defog, and yeah. you're not yeah. having the full face exposed. To I mo- the- and I mostly ride with my visor cracked pretty much all the time, just because for whatever reason I just fog up a lot. And it's I, you're I remember, so hot. I'm so hot. I'm breathing so heavy all the time, guys. But I remember this morning, like, that wasn't working. Yeah. Like, even well. that. And, oh, and it was the morning. So I was driving. Uh, at one point, I had to drive east. So also, the sun is in my face. And I can't fucking see anything. It's just black. And, oh, my God, it was terrifying. So I get to the DMV. And I'm like, you know, it's, I'm, it's already, I'm already 50th in line or something. And I finally get up to the customer service desk and I'm like showing the lady all my stuff. And I'm like, do I, I do I have everything? And she was like, oh, yeah, you can just mail this in. <laughs> she was like, yeah, just do it. You just have to write out a check for like ninety eight dollars or whatever and do this, this and this. And you can just mail that in here. Here's an envelope. And I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so that was so that was my that is thus far my my worst ride. <laughs> So real quick, uh, another round the table here before we drift on the game talking worst stuff. I want to ask you what you think the worst road in town is, Xander, for biking specifically. Um, motorbiking or bicycling? Uh, pick the worst of the two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, pretty much most I roads mean, suck for bicycling, despite this apparently being a bike friendly city. But motorcycles specifically here, yeah. 
there are actually certain parts of this neighborhood that's or no, let's take it back. There's certain parts of uh, Northeast Alberta neighborhood where my second job is right now that if you go off the wrong road, oh, I'm sorry, unimproved road. Yep. Mike, this is a nice neighborhood. Why am I spitting over gravel right now? This is some bullshit. I thought this was a road, not a lake. Right. Ha-ha. Not in the winter, not in the fall, not in the spring. Suck it. Uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of parts of, of, of Northeast Alberta neighborhood where if you just take the wrong road, it's just a bunch of fucking, not even potholes because they're just holes in a dirt road with gravel on them. And I'm just like, all right, go five miles an hour. It's more Keep. like the surface of the moon. Well, you know what? Yeah. But actually, like, not as soft. And there's no zero gravity, so I can't do cool <laughs> flips. Yeah, yeah those are the bummer. worst. Columbia Boulevard. Why? It is really? a combination of, especially if you get farther away from this end and more towards the river, it starts falling apart fast. Mm, and fascinating. Get, you get a lot of potholes. You get a lot of people trying to cross a two-lane two each way with suicide lane oh, road okay. uh, constantly. People are always trying to flip weird U-turns. Half the traffic doesn't know where they're going. The other half are trying to speed above 45 miles an hour. It, it's it's this like special hell of <laughs> th- there's not much of a shoulder either. So you have two lanes going each direction with a suicide lane. It should be everything that's right in the world as far as a major throughway. Except then there are people pushing carts across a five lane street yeah. and people who don't know what they're going and suddenly you think they're in some barren wasteland commercial industrial hell zone and are we're concerned about marauding gangs apparently. <laughs> so what you're saying is a real life version of Frogger is happening. Yes, literally. Yikes. And I am the motorcyclist on that. <laughs> For me, the the two roads that I hate the most, and I hate them equally, are Southwest NATO, because it, oh, is, yeah. it, it, it is like riding through a heavily shelled war zone <laughs> on a motorcycle. <laughs> and uh, 82nd. Uh-huh. There are stretches of 82nd that have finally been resurfaced, yeah. but they are few and far between. 82nd, also, it's one of those roads that Portland, Portland doesn't want to take care of it. The state doesn't want to take care of it because it's a highway. So they they keep arguing over whose responsibility it is to do it. But yeah. Also, it's East Portland. And if you're in East Portland, the city doesn't give a fuck about you. Basically, anything after 60th, they're like, fuck you. Yep. You know. Pretty much. Since my my limited writing in in Portland thus far, the two that have just two little ones, uh, 60th, Northeast 60th between Halsey. And uh, Sacramento oh, yeah. is basically like cobblestone. <laughs> also, uh, 43rd between Division and like Clinton is also basically cobblestone. It's just pebbles and a couple of little asphalt like grout <laughs> in between some rocks. It's awful. I think that's called progress. Um, I'm also going to go give a quick <laughs> shout out. <laughs> A quick shout out to every single part of Portland roads where they've decided that uh, max tracks or light rail tracks are an acceptable thing for people to go and ride on with either a bicyclist or a motorcyclist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Especially when they all kind of go and cross each other. Oh, Lord. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, this is a road. Good luck. And then when it rains, it gets all manner of slippery, which mm-hmm. is already slippery again. Um, and also uh, Hawthorne Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, my butthole clinches really tight every time I go over Hawthorne Bridge. I'm just never going to go don't. across yeah. the Hawthorne just don't. Bridge. Just the Morrison's right there. Yeah, I'm going to take Burnside. Fuck Burnside's it. Well, Morrison there. used to be just as bad until they did the fucked up rework on it. I, I don't understand what people's thing about the Hawthorne Bridge is. I mean, but I, I, I support you in your det- detestation you. of it. Fuck but. <laughs> I, oh I just don't get it. Can you just cut his mic? Bye, bye, Jacob. My my, uh, my first time riding over the uh, the the trolley the trolley streetcar tracks <laughs> was uh, was was a little was a little butt end vagina clenching for me. Especially uh, the Broadway Bridge is not good. I just I have no, not gone to no, the other side no, no, of. No. Yeah. I have not crossed the river yet with my scooter. Hot take. The streetcar tracks are worse than the max tracks. Oh, interesting. That's good to know. I, that's that's my personal opinion. I, I don't just think find, you're wrong. I, I I just think they don't bed them in the street as well. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to remember back to my my Team Oregon class. I'm like, okay, go over them at an angle. Don't you know? Yeah, <laughs> it, it worked. <laughs> it all worked. 
Well, I want to take this to gaming and talk about the worst games we've ever played. Fallout 76. Well, uh, (laughs) motherfucker beat me to it. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But the games that I specifically want to talk about, for me, I'm going to kick this off with some tabletop games. And uh, despite me having a deep hatred for Cards Against Humanity and Settlers of Catan, I also (laughs) uh, play a lot of role-playing games and the games that uh, strike to me when I think what's the worst game I've ever played? Both of them were convention gaming experiences. Ah, yes. Um, And I'm going to be kind of vague on these because some of them involve people I like in ways that I didn't appreciate. (laughs) So one of these gaming experiences was at GameStorm and I remember sitting at this table playing a game uh, an indie game that's very popular and really enjoying this game. Really enjoyed uh, the mechanics of the game, enjoyed uh, the the story that was happening in the in the uh, in the tabletop experience with us, but the guy I was sitting next to smelled so bad that I I couldn't think if I was sitting to like the wind would occasionally blow past when the AC kicked on in this hotel, in this hotel space. (laughs) And like just this whiff of him would flow by and it was, I wanted to gag. So I fortunately in my bag, I had a little tin of Carmex. I was going to say, did you bring a snuff box? And I just (laughs) slathered it all (laughs) over my nostrils and suddenly I didn't smell them anymore. However, it wore out pretty quickly. So I basically spent that whole game slathering. And they were like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I got a chapped nose. <laughs> how, do you, how do you do that? I'm a motorcyclist. <laughs> As if that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, Vicks Vapor Rub yes. also is a good thing yeah. to have in your... Any of us who have worked in healthcare know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vicks Pack Vapor in your Rub. gaming bag. <laughs> Just put some in your little tube, put it up their nose. Oh, it lasts for hours. And, and chew wintergreen gum at the same oh, time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Having yeah. dealt with a lot of bodies in my time. Those, yep, uh, yep. those throat, uh, what do you call them? The, they're, they're, it's not gum. It's the, the filmy mm-hmm. Listerine throat strips. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 pop one of those strip, and yeah. it goes right through your nose. Just uh, like eight Altoids, it's fine, you know. Anyway, the other one was also a convention game, and... Again, going to be kind of vague on this. I had gone to this convention up in Seattle and signed up for an Unknown Armies game. Unknown Armies is one of my favorite role-playing games of all time. (laughs) Well, I go and sit down at the table at the appointed time, and no one shows up. Wait about 15 minutes. No one shows up. Like, God damn it. Oh, well. A friend of mine sitting over at another table. I go and join her. And everything is fine. And helping somebody play test another game. And it was a lot of fun. Then, finally, about 30, 40 minutes into the slot, the group shows up because they had actually gone to the wrong room. Now, this isn't the worst game I've ever been in, but it's the worst game I could have been in. I dodged a bullet on this one. <laughs> the guy who sat down and ran was clearly like six, fifteen 15 or 16 and I think one of the players was his uncle or his dad, and the others were just his high school friends that had come, and they were all playing this game. And they all called him like he had some kind of, I don't remember what it was. He had some kind of like a weird leet hacksaw handle that he went by socially. And no. Like, who, who does that? It was like a raver name or something. And then he played an Unknown Armies campaign, like a nonstop combat slog. What? And I'm sitting and listening to this game over my shoulders and being like, oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it was it was wonderful. So I'm going to a little combo of, uh, of two. I'm going to do one tabletop game and one board game, I guess you can call it. Okay, so tabletop game. My first uh, tabletop experiences were with my high school buddies and... We had this thing where we had a D&D campaign. We would all kind of go around where one person would run a campaign and then we'd have another GM in the group and then they would run a campaign. And the first three were just a lot of fun. And then we got that guy. Mm. Don't be that guy. Don't, don't be, be that guy. Don't be that guy. That, that guy that was that super skinny guy that had like the fake dragon on his shoulder he would show up with. Oh, uh, yeah. And he just thought he was the most clever son of a bitch around and he would all right, you've entered this like crazy puzzle chamber now. And we're like, okay, you've completely gone off rails as to what the entire campaign was so far. But sure, 
we're in a puzzle chamber. Okay. And his puzzles made no sense. And we had real good experience role players with us. And they're just like, I, like none of this, none of this makes sense. Mm. So we're just stuck in rooms for like an hour just going, dude, just what? Like what? Are, like none of your skills would work. He was like trying to make you figure out these ornate things that he made that required no skill checks whatsoever. And only he thought were clever. It's a magic. It's magically locked and you don't have a key. That kind of bullshit. It was that kind of bullshit. And we all kind of got together after the one session and just went, so this is done, right? Like without him there, like, yeah, th- th- this is done. This is done. The other one, I was much younger. I used to be quite a good chess player when I was a kid. Uh, and I remember playing in this game against someone that I did not like at all. A fake friend, as it were. <laughs> and I had this guy like on the ropes in a chess game. And this was the game that was going to get you into like the championship, like the county or whatever it was, championship. And I'm like, I got this. I got this. And he made some kind of like look over their distraction thing. And I looked over. And when I came back, he had moved pieces around. Oh, oh come on. And I knew it. And I called him on it. And he just went, nope. That was there the whole time. No one else saw it. This guy had been like physically abusive to me in the past. And I just was like, well, I don't need any more of that shit in my life. So I was like, all right, I guess you got me, asshole. And it really kind of went and threw off my entire wanting to keep playing chess as good as I was as a little kid. Because I just went, what's the point if this is just going to happen? And I regret that now. But that was maybe my worst gaming experience in that regard. So... So many of my worst games we I can't talk about on the mics. I'm I'm having that problem too. Yeah, because I, I, I will let me just run down the list with with the slight references and I'll get to the one that I can talk about. The time I agreed to demo a game for a friend's friend, and the friend in question put a lot of pressure on me to do it, which is how I ended up demoing the game Nazis versus Klansmen. Oh, what um do Ugh. they all die in the end uh i'm not gonna go there i'm just i'm just not my 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 feedback critique was uh so you need to rethink the entire theme of your game you have some interesting mechanics but the theme is horrible don't ever speak to me again um yikes of course i've had more than once where the game master's significant other was involved mm. um the the one that was highly disturbing where the where i was playing a game of axis and allies where the person playing russia was really really into the person playing germany but didn't but germany did not realize that there was some amorous affection going on <laughs> which led to the game of axis and allies where russia kept bailing germany out <laughs> what the what weird okay all right Okay. But the one that I remember. Can I ask you out on a detente? Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) My friend Wolfgar and I were trying to find a new gaming group. And we were trying to find new people to play with. Did you say Wolfgar? Wolfgar. Wolfgar as in like uh, from Runar and Drizzt companion in the north. Uh. That would be the correct name. Yes. All right. Yes. Cool. Uh, uh, it was his legal name. Uh, Fantastic. Yep. So, all uh, right. You know, sorry. I, keep I, going. <laughs> I come from a part of the nation where there's a lot of Scandinavian people, and you do meet people named Odin, and it's a family name that's been had handed down. Um, but we were trying to find a gaming group, and we'd looked in a couple different places and tried with a couple groups, and you know were had not come up with a gaming group that really worked yet and we got propositioned by this guy to to come play in his game that he wanted to start the idea was cool fantasy creatures in an alternate west early wild west setting okay so yeah it was cool uh gurp system there was a lot going in there potential potential there was potential and then i walked in and I saw the first wrestling poster. 
And then I saw their second wrestling poster. Okay, there's nothing wrong with wrestling. I don't enjoy it, but I have many friends that do. And, and they then I find it th- in awesome ways. And then I saw the third wrestling poster. Then I saw the Hustler poster. Then I saw the fourth hu- uh, 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 wrestling poster. <laughs> then I saw the second Hustler poster. There. And then I saw the two malnourished cats. Oh, oh I have no. never tried to get so hard out of a game in my life. It was it was bad. It was so bad. We did that one session. It was je- like everything wrong in, you know, it was there. There were tons of signs. And like when I say the, there's nothing wrong with having wrestling posters, but when you're in a rental apartment and you obviously used an industrial staple gun to put them on the walls. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, dear. You've reminded me of the worst game ever. Literally was a tabletop campaign that I joined when I lived in Atlanta. It was the only game around. And it, for some reason, it was really hard to find other gamers around that time. So if you wanted to play D&D, you played it at this guy's table. And he was one of the most min-maxing, childish, immature, just he, he was a man-child, man-baby GM who liked to get his way and get to, to work out all of his personal uh, hatreds of himself onto oh. the people playing his game. Yikes. He, he was awful. That and seems healthy. It was, uh, he rewarded people that sucked up to him personally in game. And it was, it was a terrible game. It was the only game. His house stank. His, uh, his cat was well fed, but the whole place was unclean and smelled yep. like cat yep. poop. It was, it was a, it was awful. Well, there's a positive side effect from this, uh, in that it's also where I met my best friend, Greg, <laughs> because Yay. who hated me at first because I figured out how much I hated this game. But I really enjoyed fucking with it. So I started making characters called Kill Me Now and just played it. And I stopped giving a shit. And uh, Greg was like, those guys don't take the game seriously. And then later he's like, yeah, I figured out why. (laughs) 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 Thanks, Greg. (laughs) Thanks, Greg. Thanks for listening, Greg. Thanks, Greg. We love you, Greg. I think one that would be most appropriate to tell at this table this evening would be my first ever RPG experience. Back in 1997, I was 16 years old and my, I had my first quote unquote serious boyfriend at the time and his friends wanted to get together and play mage. What a horrible oh. game to start with. <laughs> what a wonderful game. What a horrible game to start with. So we, and we were all like, you know, SCA kids. So <laughs> like you do, that's how we met. That's how we met was at the SCA, of course. This explains so much about you. Nerds. Right? Yeah. Nerds. Nerds. So many nerds. So we go to uh, the local Bennigans. <laughs> Not Denny's? Hold on. Nope. Oh, 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 hold on. Bennigans. Oh, hold on. So let me get this straight. You were a theater kid. Yes. Who was into SCA. Yes. Whose first game was Mage. Yes. And played at Bennigan's. Yes. Oh, my God. There, I was th- also a goth kid, remember? Oh, God. I, th- th- there has to be an encyclopedia entry where you are the picture. <laughs> 16-year-old me might be. Yeah. 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 So, uh, actually, funny enough, that boy, that boy, my boyfriend from back in 1997, we're actually still friends. And I've been trying to convince him to listen to the, po- the podcast. So, he'll probably remember this. Hi. I wouldn't name names just to protect, to protect the innocent. <laughs> and all I remember of this game in the Bennigans was that I made a care. I had like no idea what was going on. Like, I don't even remember rolling any dice. Like, I have no I, I had no clue what was going on. But like, I was a theater kid. I, you know, was, you know, whatever could do with some a little bit of improv, like badly. I'm terrible at improv, oddly enough, um, even despite my hammer crawl zingers that I, I can pull out. So anyway, so all I remember is that my my character had some kind of obsession with like peanut butter and it was like some kind of special item was like this jar of peanut butter. Was and it crunchy or smooth? I have probably smooth because crunchy peanut butter is the worst. 
So and you were playing a hollow one. Okay, continue. I, I have no <laughs> idea. All I remember is that my 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 character was really clumsy. Okay, so you were playing a hollow okay, one. Okay, I have continue. no idea. Anyway, well, she was really clumsy. And all I remember is that every time I asked the GM, like, okay, or every time I said, like, okay, so I'm going to do this, his response was, no, you're not. What? Fuck I, that guy. I don't remember ever doing anything interesting because uh, I would be like, okay, I'm going to do this. And he's like, no, you're not. No, you can't. No, you're not. No, you can't. And I, it was it was awful. And I didn't play another role-playing game until I met you. Oh, thank you. Basically. I'm, I'm glad I, you know, brought you back into the fold. So I don't even remember if it was if it was Hammercrawl, if it was Monster Hearts or something. But it was like... I think it was Monster Hearts. Monster Hearts yeah. in like six or seven years ago. So I yeah. went like... 20 years or something without playing another role playing game because that mage game was so awful. It sounds like Poppy, if you just let him mansplain the game to you more, it would have been more pleasurable for you. Ugh. If you had understood <laughs> if you had understood your place. Wow. I fully expect to have things thrown at me and I will deserve it. Okay, Xander. Uh even though I said that I wasn't going to be pushing for time at the beginning of this episode. We do have a little bit of a time thing because Poppy's got to go to an event. Yep. So, Xander, I'm giving you five minutes. Tell us how much Fallout 76 sucks. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's taking a huge swig of beer, y'all. Uh, Just remember, old German makes us belgy. Uh, yep, there we go. All right. <laughs> so, first up, I was so fucking excited about this game when it came out because it looked I remember. gorgeous. It looked gorgeous. I like. Bought a special thing for it. John Denver. The opening thing yeah. was great. Uh, Talk everything. slower. I'm cutting this line of cocaine for you. And it's going to take me longer than that. <sighs> so they put everything I didn't want into this game immediately. Uh, <laughs> they put other players. I don't want to play with other players. This is my fucking world. Two. Okay. So now you have the whole concept is that everyone comes from Vault 76. And then you encounter these players out in, in, in this multiplayer game, which I didn't ask for. And then they're supposed to be like, oh, you're also from the vault. And they're just like, out of my way, noob. And they fucking shoot you because they've been playing the game for longer than you have. Then you die. I'm like, we're on the same team. We're supposed to build America. Second, like one of my favorite things about the Fallout series have always been the NPCs because they've been made so beautifully, so clever, great plots, heartbreaking plots. And you know what they have? No NPCs. Bunch of fucking robots that just play recordings of people that have died a long time ago. So you encounter nobody in the game at all. Mm. And then they're like, you know what we should do? Limit how much you can carry. Well, well, that's fine. That's always been a thing. But like, it was so ludicrous at one point that someone actually went and mailed an entire box of um, those fucking hair, hair clips. With those, uh, uh, bobby pins. Bobby pins. Mailed a whole uh, box of bobby pins to Tin Howard and said, how much do these weigh? <laughs> As a protest, because they weighed way more than they would in real life. And it crashed like nobody's business. The graphics were buggy. I would like play the game and then we get kicked offline and everything that I just spent like an hour doing was just fucking gone. And I'm like, what? you know what? You, you know, this wouldn't happen if this wasn't online. Mm. I don't want to play an online game. And then they're like, OK, so we'll, we'll try to <laughs> we'll, we'll try to go and fix some things. You know what we should do? You know what we should do? You know what every what every Fallout player has ever wanted? A battle royale mode. Are you fucking kidding me? Ugh. Why would I do that? Like, I'm not playing Call of Duty, you asshole. Online this is, um, gamer bro circle This jerk? is why I'm not playing Call of Duty. I don't want a battle royale mode. Um, just infuriating. Everything they kept doing was like, well, we'll do like a funny thing where now you can brew some things. I guess that'd be great if there was like, I don't know, NPCs I could share a beer with that were well written, but there's not. <laughs> You're just making me want to get drunk by myself and hate my life for spending $80 on this fucking game. And I finally, finally, they are going... Finally, next year, because they had to push it back to, to do some other expansion nobody had fucking asked for, they're finally putting some NPCs in there, but it's going to take like a year and a half after the initial fucking release. I have not gone on that game in like six months. Every time they add a new thing, it's like, oh, well, I don't want that either. Cool. Maybe another few months. Hey, but Xander. I, but I understand all the things that people do want, they are finally adding if you pay them 14 bucks a month. Oh, oh my God. God. The Fallout 1? What, the, yep. what, what was yep. that fucking yep. called? Yep. Fallout, Fallout 1? First. Fallout first. Foul out firstly, go fuck yourself is really what that is. <laughs> and I read all these things. And it's just like, hey, I know you spent a shit ton of money on this already. I know we added microtransactions because I want to look cool and take selfies of myself in the fucking wasteland. Cool. Right. Ask for that. That yeah, I definitely asked for that, too, Timmy. But <laughs> now they're going to go and charge you like 100 bucks a year for a game you already spent like 60 to 80 bucks on to do the things you asked for to begin with. Go fuck yourself. 
Okay, let's move on to drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I assume at some point we're going to come back to the Fallout 76. Because I feel like it's the shitty gift that keeps on giving. Oh, just wait until they pull the NPCs. Just wait till they pull the NPCs because they don't sell enough Fallout firsts. I will kill you in your sleep. No, they'll probably charge you five bucks per NPC added to the game. (laughs) Anyway, let's talk about drinks. (laughs) I would rather drink. I would rather drink a Crownberry than play Fallout seventy six the way it currently is right now. Speaking of the worst drinks I've ever had in my entire fucking life, Jacob. Good segue. Worst drinks. Worst drinks, huh? So you, you hated it that much? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. He just crushed a can with his mind. <laughs> I've been PTSD from the Crownberry, especially when this motherfucker pulled a goddamn fifth of old crow out of his bag moments after I downed that it thing. It was more than a fifth. <laughs> uh, but in addition to the Crownberry uh, being... Some of the uh, probably still the worst thing I've ever had in my entire life. Um, I wear that like a badge of honor. Oh, we'll rip that badge off of you so hard and so fast. God, I'm all worked up now. You know what? Someone else go. I'll, I'll come back to my second. Listen, I, I just can't. Right I can now. tell you mine already. It's uh, okay. Back when I lived in Atlanta, I rented a room at a frat house for about a year because uh, it was the uh, the Psyop Salon Fraternity in Atlanta. Uh, Psyu, thank you very much for giving me space to live. They needed people to pay the money so they could pay the bills, so they were renting out some of the rooms at their house. And I met a lot of great people. Uh, I pretty much owe that house for knowing everybody that I know today. Like Everything went through that. Because I met that house and made those connections, uh, awesome things happened. But that house had an annual party they called the Heaven and Hell Party. And you had to pay a little bit of cover to get in, a donation, they called it. And once you did, you could choose to either go to heaven or go to hell. Heaven was nine consecutive sweets that you had to eat that were just body-destroying sweets. Whereas heaven was, uh, I'm sorry, hell was seven consecutive drinks that you had to have. Many people get to hell. Very few people have made it to heaven because heaven is apparently that difficult. But hell, one of the drinks, uh, there are some, there were many drinks in in hell that I remember, but I'm going to talk about two of them. It's just a funny sentence to hear out loud. The the first one, every year, the heaven and hell party, they would go to the store and buy next year's step one. And because, and then they would put it in a shed because Next year's the first level is a year old warm Ham's special light beer oh. that has been sitting in a garage oh. in Atlanta, Georgia for, for a, a year. year. So that's Mother called Mary and Joseph. That's called a uh, hunting cabin beer where I'm from. Yeah. <sighs> but that's not the worst. The worst, in my opinion, <laughs> it's not the worst. Was, was probably step five. Can you think of two captains that should never hang out together? Cat Morgan. Morgan and Cat. Uh, trying to come up with another one. Captain Morgan and Captain Crunch. There you go. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> it was called the Captain and Captain. And what they did is they took a tumbler, <gasps> filled it with Captain Crunch. No crunch berries. You don't even get crunch berries. And then they would pour it in with Captain Morgan to fill in the gaps. I feel it says something it about like a... me that I got that one so fast. <laughs> is that like a... You eat it like a cereal? No, you 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 kick that rum back as quick as you can, and then you slowly eat the cereal. Oh. Because if you wait, it becomes soggy Captain Crunch. <laughs> that would slide down your throat easier. Oh, it's, but the texture was awful. It was like, so bad. Not. <laughs> yeah, there goes Xander. He's got to have a moment and go vomit. Captain and Captain will always be the worst drink I've ever had. I love the stories from those parties that you tell me. (laughs) So I actually recently had what might have been the worst, maybe even worse than fucking Crownberry. I've been on this weird kick lately where I'm just trying to buy really stupid, stupid, awful drinks for me and my girl from the tribe that are like sold at convenience stores. So on my way uh, to work, I went, oh, what are buzz balls? Anybody? Never heard of it. 
Don't know what you're talking about. That when your uh, your barber takes uh, clippers to your nutsack. Yeah, that's when you get yourself a buzz balls. Yeah. Uh, no, buzz balls are these. Oh, those things, those little like the, circular the margarita, cocarita. Yeah. yeah. So buzz balls, they're like two fifty. It's like a flavored malt liquor. Yep. That's fifteen percent alcohol. Yep. It's like eight ounces of them. Yep. And they had a giant fucking box at this place I walked into, and I just went. Fuck it. So I bought one that was pina colada. And one that I think was just what was the other one? like green apple fuzz or fizz or some shit like that. And I just went, these look terrible. I'm going to buy these. And I'm going to tell her, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> at work, I kept them in the fridge, make sure they were nice and cold by the time I got home to her. And we cracked these bad boys open. And the faces we made <laughs> rivaled that of Crownberry. And she doesn't drink great things sometimes on the regular and she made a face and I just went yeah that's really that bad and then we went oh shake before you drink them <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was the problem we shook them a little bit the pina colada became tolerable that green apple fuzz was just still just like you're an abomination before God I just think you don't like apple I just think you give me shit he's not wrong so my worst drink was the worst delivered pickup drink of all time. So pickup drink, you're at a bar, you know, this is not a thing for people who are substantially younger than me, but you're at a bar and that person tells the bartender to send you a drink, you know, as a way of breaking the ice, that sort of thing. Very cute girl bought me and sent me over an Irish car bomb. As a pickup drink? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I've never had one of those. I'm holding out. I'm yeah. holding out for when I hit bottom. Yeah, they look terrible. That They are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. two of those, you'll hit bottom real fast. So my worst drink I actually had this year, I think. I was doing a a unusual wines, wine tasting at a place that shall remain nameless. And <laughs> they they I I don't even want to say the name of this wine. I don't I mean, I think I've blocked it. Like I can't really even remember what the what this what this wine is called. But they were, you know, they're saying, "Oh, it's like this naturally made wine." Like they basically you know, throw the grapes in a vat and just let it like naturally ferment. It's like vestigial wine processing or blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, interesting. Sure. It was fucking prison wine. <laughs> That's right. Was, it, was I there? I think I was no, there. No, you oh, weren't, at, you weren't yeah. at that one. You okay. just heard me talk about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Prison it's wine. like you were there. And then I, I pointed it out at another wine shop that we were at yeah. and I said, never buy that. It's <laughs> awful. It's basically, so f- a number of years ago, some friends of mine made dumpster wine, which is where you go to the dumpster of like, you know, new seasons or something and get out all the, get all the expired juice that they have like thrown away. Oh God. And then you take that home and you ferment it. Who know? It's called Puno. Okay. Or, you know, dumpster <laughs> I wine. I dumpster wine. I like dumpster wine. Yeah. Dumpster wine, prison wine, that toilet That sounds like something wine. I shouldn't drink. I'm like Puno, in which I'd be like, oh, I'm curious. It basically tasted like somebody took some inexpensive juice and let it ferment. And then they put it in a bottle, put a fancy label on it, and are now charging $20 a bottle for it. Is this a scheme we can get it on? Can we fund Bikers, I, Dice, and Bars through this? I honestly, I asked. I was like, "Is was this was this wine made as a joke <laughs> to see how much Portlanders would pay for fucking prison wine?" We are in Portland. I'm sure we could pull off this scam. It it didn't even taste out like literally it didn't even taste alcoholic. It tasted like juice, and I don't think I even got. I don't I don't think there was any alcohol in it. Did it taste like juice and regret? <laughs> it tasted like juice and just bougie hipster asshole. Oh, oh, but God. did it taste like someone made homemade wine out of ketchup and Tabasco sauce? Oh god, no, but I'm not wh- why would you pay $20 a bottle for for prison wine? <laughs> hey man, fancy labels go a long fucking way. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of fancy labels, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, put a stamp on this one and wrap this episode up here because uh, Poppy's got to roll out. Yeah. Worst episode ever. <laughs> Worst episode ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, this, I got to roll fun. out. Yeah. I'm going to um, go represent Breakfast Puppies at the Portland Weird United Gala this evening. Uh, and you're going because of a sad reason. Yes, I'm One going, of the worst weeks ever. One of the worst weeks ever. Uh, our dear friend Rojo the Llama passed away. Oh. And he was supposed to be at the gala tonight representing the uh, Mountain Peaks Therapy Llamas and Alpacas. And in his stead, Napoleon is going to be there. Oh. Um, so I am going and I'm wearing, I'm rocking my Rojo t shirt and I'm going to go represent Breakfast Puppies to go give uh, the Llama Mamas some big hugs and kisses and, and uh, condolences from Breakfast Puppies. Rest in peace, Rojo. Rest in peace, Rojo. We love you. He was a sweetie. He was. So cute. He was. I just loved him. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this up then. Uh, once again, we wish to remind you, dear listeners, that if you wish to interact with us online, join us on Discord, send us some Facebook messages, maybe tweet at us, uh, you know, however you like, we're out there. And if you want to help us pay the bills, pop on to our Patreon and kick us a buck or two a month. Or uh, we've got a little tip link in the Pinecast jar that is uh, in every one of our episode show notes. Uh, kick us a buck. Uh, we thank everybody who has helped us. Uh, you're you're helping us buy this booze that we're drinking, at least. And again, on Discord, we're actually all fairly active on there. So if you want to interact with us, we're there. I mean, I'm there at least two or three times a day. So come by and say hi. Yeah, they're they're there. I'm over they're, here in my rocking there, chair. Yeah. There. Rest of I'm, the rest of them all are there. I'm over in my rocking chair going, get off my lawn. I'm there but, like once a week, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, once a week, once a day, join us, say hello, and we'd uh, love to meet you. And maybe if you're local, we'll head out, get some drinks, and get to know you. Yes, yes. In fact, once we have some of, some of those coming up. Watch this space for some announcements regarding some meetups that are going to be planned for the month of December. Sweet. I love meetups. Anyway, uh, you've been listening to Bikers, Dice, and Bars, as usual. I'm NPC. I'm just Jacob. Dr. Xander Gerrymander. Poppy Beaujolais. And once again... Shiny side up. Always tip your bartender. Always roll those crits. And please always drink responsibly. Thanks for joining us, friend. We've reached the end of Bikers Dice.